Let's talk about Starbucks, a company that didn't even sell brewed coffee when it started. Yet over 50 years later, it's a billion dollar global giant. How did this happen? Let's find out. So Starbucks began as a small coffee bean shop in Seattle's Pike Place Market in 1971, founded by three friends, Jerry, Zev and Gordon, inspired by Alfred Pete, a pioneer in coffee roasting, they aimed to bring high quality coffee beans to the masses. Coffee at that point was mostly consumed as instant mixes at home, but Starbucks sought to change that. The name Starbucks was chosen after exploring various nautical themes, eventually landing on the name for the first mate in Moby Dick. The original logo was based on a 16th century Norse woodcut of a two-tailed mermaid, symbolizing the allure of the sea and captured the maritime spirit of the Pacific Northwest. The real transformation of Starbucks, however, didn't start until 1982, when Howard Schultz joined Starbucks as Director of Retail Operations and Marketing. Schultz was captivated by Starbucks' commitment to quality, but saw untapped potential. A trip to Italy would change everything. Schultz experienced the vibrant cafe culture. Coffee bars were not just places to grab a quick espresso, but they were social hubs where people gathered to chat and relax. He realized Starbucks could replicate this experience in the US. However, the original founders were focused on selling coffee beans and equipment, not creating a coffee house chain. Determined, Schultz left Starbucks in 85 to start his own coffee shop. His concept succeeded, and in 87, Schultz had made enough money to actually acquire Starbucks, merging it with his company and transforming it into the cafe style business we know today. With Schultz as CEO, Starbucks embarked on massive, rapid expansion. By the early 90s, the company had spread across the US, and in 96, Starbucks opened its first international store in Tokyo. Today, Starbucks boasts over 30,000 stores in more than 80 countries. But what makes Starbucks more than just a place to buy coffee? It's the Starbucks experience. Schultz envisaged a third place where people could relax, socialize, or work. The brand's ability to personalize drinks, whether a simple black coffee or a complex frappuccino, has become one of its defining features, turning Starbucks into a cultural icon. Starbucks has continually evolved beyond just a coffee shop. It's long been considered an archetype of innovation, consistently looking to other markets and sectors to enhance its practices. From the outset, Schultz introduced the Italian cafe culture to the US, establishing a new paradigm for coffee consumption. And as with any success story, luck played a part. The rise of Wi-Fi, laptops and mobile phones helped create the modern Starbucks experience. In recent years, the company has drawn inspiration from fast food chains, incorporating drive through coffee stores into its business model. This approach, adapting successful ideas from other industries, has been key to Starbucks strategy. However, Starbucks' massive success comes with drawbacks. As with any large corporation, its environmental impact is significant. Reports suggest that 8,000 single-use paper cups are consumed every minute. In 2020, Starbucks announced goals to reduce its carbon, water and waste footprints, but whether these goals will be met remains to be seen. Critics also argue that aggressive expansion akin to McDonald's and Subway has homogenized our streets, making it difficult for independent businesses to compete. But could things be shifting? With multiple Starbucks locations on nearly every high street, is now the company facing competition from itself. The recent change in CEO hints that shareholders may be dissatisfied, suggesting that Starbucks's future might not be as bright as it once seemed. Time will tell if Starbucks is actually in decline or whether this is just a new chance for it to innovate. So the next time you enjoy your favorite Starbucks drink, remember that it all started with a small shop that didn't even sell brewed coffee. Starbucks isn't just a coffee shop. It's a cultural phenomenon that continues to shape how the world enjoys coffee. And you could argue the explosion in boutique coffee shops really wouldn't be possible without companies such as Starbucks. But what do you think? Are they on the decline? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and share and subscribe for more. We post videos almost every week about design, design thinking, founder stories, brands and digital. Until next time, stay curious and see you in the next one.